salvation. All right, parents, we'd like you to please sing with us. We like to hear the men, especially. Okay, let's try it together. This day was made by the Lord. Don't be shy. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. Yes, yes. Okay, you can be seated, boys and girls. And, and Emma? Let's do the song. Would you sing the refrain from there? Taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Taste and see the goodness of God. And I always tell the children, I think that God is saying to us, pay attention and see how many ways I love you. The goodness of God. So let's pray it together one more time. Everyone taste and see. Let's try it. Taste and see. of God. Very good. Thank you. I think we're ready to begin. So please stand as we begin our celebration of First Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we welcome you to this special day in the life of each of you, especially of these beloved children, as they come into the presence of the Lord to celebrate their first communion in order to participate in a worthy way, let us pause and acknowledge our sins 
and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the Paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we, to confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ, may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the following Sabbath, Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it, and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see, oh, taste and see. Taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh, taste and see. Taste and see the goodness of God. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see, oh, taste and see. Taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, then you will also know my Father. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than this, because I am going to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Dear children, how do you feel today? Just good? Great, that sounds much better, more appropriate for today's celebration because it's a joyful day and you look all dressed up, you look so fine, so wonderful. And what is, why is that? Why are you so dressed up? If Mrs. Cabrera can help me, she's gonna be my assistant this morning. Just a second, she's getting ready of the microphone that is a little bit tricky. So why are you all dressed up? Yes, Let, let's wait for her so everybody can hear you clearly. Because we're gonna receive our communion. Excellent, and who are you going to be receiving in Holy Communion? Yes? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Excellent. So that means that we are going to be, especially you, are going to be receiving Jesus himself. And that's one of the greatest gifts of all. And this is why this day will be one of the happiest day in your lives and in the life of your family as well. So I want to congratulate you today precisely because you are joining the church in this special celebration. I, as your priest, our parish community, your parents, teachers, and relatives are so, so proud of you for studying and learning about Jesus in order to be prepared for this special day in which you had said yes to Jesus, welcoming him as you will be doing shortly in your lives. Today, the church is celebrating many things. Today is the 1st of May. And today we honor St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. And we pray to uh, Joseph to bless you all and to help you in your lives of faith to grow closer to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And also the month of May is commonly known as the month of Mary, who is our mother, our spiritual mother, who cares for us as she cared for Jesus. So you are celebrating this special occasion in such a joyous moment, in this beautiful month. I was visiting you recently and I was asking you different questions. And I was asking you what happens if someone suddenly stopped from eating? What happens? If you could die of hunger. Exactly, you can die of hunger. And I was also explaining, that's a very extreme situation. But also when we stop eating or we do not eat properly, fruits, vegetables, and all those things that are important for our body nourishment in order to grow, because you want to grow, right? And that's why it's important to eat and rest. Jesus, is inviting us to eat his body that is going to be for our nourishment. In other words, he's going to make us stronger in faith, in love for each other, in love for God. And this is why we participate in this special sacrament, which is the sacrament of life. We, you will be receiving the bread of life, Jesus. And that's why we are all happy together with you. So, in this day, we have also heard Jesus speaking with his disciples. And in that case, there's one whose name is Philip that is surprised by the words of Christ Jesus by saying, if you know me, you know the Father. But he was expecting to see the Father, our Heavenly Father, physically, like we see each other. And Jesus says, don't you understand that whoever sees me 
is seeing the Father. It is like, for example, maybe I look at you and suddenly I think about your father because I would say you resemble your father. You look exactly like your father. And this is somehow what is going to happen when we receive Christ Jesus. And this is the invitation and the challenge that we all received to become one with Christ Jesus. And this is why receiving the Eucharist is so important for us as believers because he's saying, receive me and receive the Father. Receive my, my strength. I will be with you to help you. I will be with you all the days of my life because we want to be connected with him. Last weekend, we have in the first communion celebration, we have identical twins. And I was using them as an example because identical twins are a very beautiful gift of God. And somehow we are invited to become like identical twins with Christ Jesus. Not in the sense that we are going to be exactly the same the way we look, because we are all different. But it means that we are going to be listening to him. And how do we listen to Jesus? Exactly, by praying. Prayer is a very important um, tool that we have. And that's why, dear parents and relatives, it's so important to nourish this relationship with Christ Jesus through prayer, giving them an example and a place in your household to praise the Lord, to worship him, to focus on him and to bring them together. Otherwise, he becomes just an acquaintance. And this is somehow what happens in this gospel reading. Philip was, to, a, to an extent, to a, to a point, um, acquaintance with Jesus, but he was not yet there. He was not able to see that Jesus was walking with them in order to bring them closer to the Heavenly Father. For example, when you are in the class, in the classroom setting, Mrs. Cruz is trying to bring you together to understand whatever subject, whatever uh, topic she is discussing with you in order to help you to grow and have even more desires to learn. For example, when you have your math class, it is uh, she's giving you the basic stuff and she will help you, she will guide you how to, to do what you need to do in math. But it is about your, uh, you practicing, it's about you making the effort of focusing that you will learn and you learn by exercising, by practicing once and all over again. And that's how you get to know what is math about and how to do what she asked of you in that particular class. The same thing happens with us. We need to come to Jesus in order to know how to acknowledge, how to recognize Jesus in our midst. For example, when you are with your classmates, you are to be nice to them. You are to be respectful to them. You have to play nice with them as a way of showing, I respect you, I love you, I care for you, as Jesus cares for me, as Jesus really is helping me to be holy. St. Joseph, my dear parents, play an important role in the life of Jesus and Mary. He was, many people say, like a shadow to Jesus. Because it was not in this case about him, but he was caring for Jesus. And he continues to point us the way to come closer to Jesus. And that's how you are being blessed with the gift of parenthood. In order to bring these children close to God, who is our heavenly father, the one that we are invited to follow and to make room in our lives in order to be nourished by him. And we are nourished, my dear parents and guests, not only by the sacrament of the Eucharist that we receive when we are in a state of grace, but also through the word that is proclaimed so that we might challenge ourselves, that we might grow even stronger in this appreciation of what is being given to us. There are many ways, my dear children, in which we gather to celebrate different things. Let's say a birthday, um, 
an anniversary of someone and other celebrations. And we gather because we love each other and we want to celebrate with other people. When we come to church, this is what we are doing, celebrating. The responsorial song chosen by the choir this morning has been taste and see the goodness of God. Jesus is constantly inviting us to really see who he is by tasting him in the Eucharist, by really listening to him in our prayers. And talking about that, after you, my dear children, receive the body of Christ, what will you be doing? After receiving the body of Christ, what will you be doing? Celebrating, and what else? What do you do as you go back to your pews? Praying. Praying. And this is very important because it is a moment very close to Jesus. And for what are you going to be praying for? Thanksgiving. In Thanksgiving. Beautiful. What else? Are you going to be praying for someone? Maybe for your parents? Maybe for your friends? after being given thanks to the Lord for the, that precious gift of Christ Jesus coming to you. So Jesus is willing to listen to you. He's willing to know what is in your hearts and minds because you are precious to him. So when we come, we are praying for all those intentions. And Jesus is saying, here I am. I want to listen to what you have to say. Like your parents are there to listen to what you have to say. This is why it's so important to really build a community of believers who are worshiping, worshiping together as a family. And I would like to, with the permission of the children, to acknowledge your parents in the following way by stating that you are the number one influence on your child's faith. And what you do to nurture faith at home and in your parish is really, really important. The church, through a series of documents that we acknowledge being written during the Second Vatican Council, noted the importance of home in nurturing faith in its reference to the family, as it is called, the domestic church. And also, when you brought your children, now about to receive their first communion, when you brought them to be baptized, one of the first things that the priest asked to you was the following. Parents, have you ask to have your children baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him or her in practice of the faith. And we ask, do you understand this? Are you willing to undertake the responsibility? And you, along with the sponsors, said, yes, we are willing. And this is how it is important to walk with them step by step in this journey of faith. This is not about once they receive the beautiful gift of Christ Jesus this morning to walk away and say, check, done, until their confirmation day. Because then they're going to be just acquaintance with Christ Jesus but they are ready for more and more. This is why we all have made the effort to listen to their confessions, the priests, and the teachers really day by day giving them the best. And I know that you have done the same and you have entrusted your beloved children to the care and guidance in this case of the religious education program in our school and Mrs. Cruz being the teacher given this class. But knowing Jesus is more than a class. 
It is to build a relationship with someone who is real. That one that we continue to rejoice and praise during this season of Easter in which we acknowledge that Christ is risen from the dead. That Christ dies no more. That Christ is the good shepherd that is leading us to our Father's house. And these children are part of this flock who are following Jesus. And this is how important it is to walk with them, to show them that there is no one greater than Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. My dear children, do you know how much Jesus loves you? Yes, you do. Can you show me how much he loves you? Like that and more, with open arms, and he welcomes you. And you know that you can talk to Jesus every day, right? Do you? Yes. And it is important to do so. Besides praying with your parents, make time for yourselves in your rooms, when you're by yourselves, and speak to him. And say everything that you want to say. Thank you for the day. Thank you for my studies. Thank you for everything that I have learned. Jesus, care for me, care for my family. And many other things. Because Jesus really pays close attention to everything that you have to say. So my brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this day of the first communion of your children, let us continue to pray as a family, gather together around the table, as a family meal time that you have together. Make time, space in your lives, and I know we all have so many things to do, to pray, to read the Bible. Maybe, especially during the weekends, you might have a family game night, in which you have that opportunity to see and develop in your children skills of how to get along with others, how to respect the others, how to value and support the others. Also, give them an example of the importance of being an active parishioner. And above all, may Sunday the day of the Lord, the day in which you say, no matter what, we are going to the church because these children are willing to receive Jesus not only today, but every single day. Right, children? Are you ready to receive Jesus every Sunday? Yes, you are ready for that. And Jesus is really always looking for you and will always look after you. So I know and I trust because I know how loving and caring you are for these children, that you will not only give to them other things, like a good shelter, food, a good education, but especially you will give them the love for God, who is always there for us. My dear children, congratulations in advance, because indeed, this is the day the Lord has made for you to meet with him and to receive him. For that, we rejoice and we are glad because the love of God is there for you all. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, with faith, let us now present our petitions to God as we celebrate our first Holy Communion Mass today. And the, the answer to our prayers will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Church. May it feed us with God's holy word and with the holy bread of the Eucharist. 
giving us life eternal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our parents and our siblings, our relatives and our friends, our godparents and our grandparents, that they may enjoy the gift of deep faith and peace in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the priests, catechists, teachers, and all who helped us in preparation for our first confession and Holy Communion. May God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the children who today for the first time will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. May they love him with all their hearts and forever live faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of us gathered here. May each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and experience with faith and love this encounter with our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our dearly departed. May the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, accept these petitions that with great faith, hope, and love we offer upon your altar as we celebrate the first Holy Communion with our children and their families today. We make these prayers in the name of your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus, risen Lord, we come to your table. With our hearts so full of joy, we come to your table. We come, we come, we come to your table. We come, we to your table, bringing gifts of all we are, we come to your table, gifts of life and love and joy, we come to your table, we come, we brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sac sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, let it do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be proud for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you had held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Enrique, his auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may ever to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and forms by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive others, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our, on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis, miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis, miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Dona nobis pacem. Dona nobis pacem. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During communion, please take off your mask to receive communion and place it back as you walk back to your seat. We thank you for your cooperation.
Whence to our war gather in your name and sing your presence in each place. We treasure the gift of this sacred meal, blessed and poured out for all in this place. Bread, the gift of your body, wine, your life, blood of war. Come to the feast, take and leave become what you receive. When two or more gather in your name, and see your presence in each place. We treasure the gift of this sacred meal, blessed and poured out for all in this place. Bread our light and our life, wine our truth and our will. Thank you. 
Please stand, boys and girls. Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. How do you feel, my dear children? Great, amazing, that's a beautiful word. And this is something that we cannot lose, the sense of awe. Because receiving Christ Jesus is a very special gift that no words can describe. And again, my dear parents and guests, thank you for allowing the children to come today to this special day in their lives and in yours. We ask with all due respect to you to really bring them together to live their faith, as I was quoting from the many documents that the church has in regards to this, but we don't need documents in order to know that Jesus is Jesus. Jesus is our Savior and Redeemer, and we need these children to grow in this, valuing this relationship with Christ Jesus. We don't want them to be just nominal Catholics. In other words, Christians by name. We want them to be really active. And the point of this realization of who we are, it comes from this relationship that we build with Christ Jesus. Allow them to come closer and closer to Christ Jesus. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and then after that, he invited his disciples to receive him. Are not words that he said just for the sake of saying those? Jesus said those words, meaning it. Let us bring the children to the fountain of grace that is Christ himself. And we will have in their lives many other moments in which they will feel amazing, grateful, loved with new energy, with a new insight to continue to do what they need to do. 
The fact that they are children, and sometimes we use big words, it doesn't mean that they are not able to understand all this. Because no, it's not about just getting to know in terms of words. It's about living what they receive. And though adults, we adults, oftentimes fall short on this, in living accordingly to the standards and teachings of Christ Jesus, when they are in this age, they don't know about limits. And Jesus puts no limits to them either. So allow them to continue to rejoice in Christ, the one that they have received in this morning in the Eucharist. And you will feel and know that you as parents are doing the right thing, which is to bring them together to Christ every single day. So thank you. Thank you for your care and concern. Thank you to Mrs. Picasso, our school principal, and Mrs. Ortega, the coordinator of religious education in the school, Mrs. Rose Cabrera, Mrs. Cruz, their teacher, and many others who have participated actively in educating them in order to come this morning to celebrate this beautiful occasion. Also, we thank Mrs. Josefina Vasquez, the religious education director, also the supporting the school in this program, the choir, the ushers, everybody, because this is a celebration of the community faith of Our Lady of the Lakes. May you all continue to celebrate and rejoice in the Lord always. And before the final blessing, you know that we ask of you to remain on your pews. You will be directed after I uh, process out to the, to the sacristy and then just to follow and abide to the guidelines that have been given to us. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. For the health and well-being of all, please continue to follow the safety guidelines. You must remain seated at the conclusion of Mass until dismissed by our ushers by section. Only one parent must stay behind to be dismissed with the child. We thank you for your cooperation. This day Please be seated.